A lot of people on Instagram sent me this video titled Why Cutting Calories Won't Help You Lose Weight. This is going to be my second video on this topic, so I'm not quite sure what to call it. Maybe something catchy like Jason Fung still misrepresents research. For anyone unaware who needs quick context, Jason Fung is an extremely successful author, low carb and intermittent fasting enthusiast. Both low carbohydrate and intermittent fasting diets can work for weight loss, and they can work very well. I'm not disputing that. I repeat, I am not disputing that. One of the common arguments in weight loss research is the role of thermodynamics, or calories in, calories out, and hormones. Some people like to discuss the importance of both of these and why they're intertwined, whereas other people like to sit more firmly in one camp and try and take a massive shit all over the other camp. Which brings us back to Jason Fung, who has a track record of presenting suspiciously one-sided information. For example, in my previous video, I discussed where Jason cited the Women's Health Initiative study as evidence that seven years of calorie counting led to virtually no weight loss. But if I could nitpick one teeny tiny little detail, that study wasn't about calorie counting at all. Not even a little bit. The participants not only did not calorie count, they were not actually encouraged to reduce their calorie intake at all. This study did not include calorie restriction or weight loss goals, yet Jason used it and claimed that it was a stunning and severe rebuke of the calorie theory of obesity. I mean, did he literally not read the full text, or did he read it and decide to misrepresent it anyway, because it can only be one of those two options. What I had learned in medical school was all about sort of calories in, calories out sort of uh, thing. Underlying principle. It. One, it's a very, very um, uh, unsuccessful way to lose weight. Counting calories simply does not work at all. And people will say, oh, but it does, it does, it does. Well, if you look at the scientific studies, it doesn't. Every single study that's looked at sort of, say, you know, trying to restrict calories leads to, at best, a couple of pounds of weight loss over like eight years. This is conflating entirely separate things that need untangling. Actively counting the calories you consume, calorie restriction as an underlying method for weight loss, and long-term weight loss maintenance, which hinges on adherence to that calorie deficit. Firstly, I am far from a staunch advocate for calorie counting, but saying that there is no evidence that it works is bullshit. He has used this line before and I find it puzzling because there's quite a lot of research that he appears to be glossing over, which shows that it could help improve weight loss outcomes. And I don't mean a really obscure research paper or two that he might not have seen. Dietary self-monitoring, which is its more common name, is an entire body of literature in itself. One early example of dietary monitoring of calorie intake using a booklet, which was associated with greater weight loss. Another paper showing that self-monitoring is associated with greater weight loss maintenance. And an entire review paper concluding that there's a significant and positive relationship between dietary self-monitoring and weight loss. Now there are many, many, many limitations of calorie counting, but let's discuss these honestly, yeah? Now when he says that long-term weight loss maintenance success rates are notoriously poor, he is correct. A lot of studies that follow up with participants many years after the initial weight loss trial show that a lot of them regain most of the weight that they've lost, and this has been confirmed by numerous review papers. But that doesn't dispute calorie control for weight loss, and it doesn't dispute calorie counting as a method. This is about dietary interventions as a whole. In one weight loss trial that included a ketogenic group, you can see that their carb intake at one month was 68 grams per day, and by 12 months it was 190 grams per day. In this trial that compared continuous energy restriction to two different forms of intermittent energy restriction, you can see that all three groups started regaining weight before the 12 month mark. Dietary adherence diminishes over time in all weight loss diets, and that appears to be irrespective of method. So singling out calorie counting, which has evidence to support improved weight loss outcomes, at least in the short term, seems suspicious. No, but you know what else seems suspicious? Jason claiming that counting calories wrecks your metabolism. I never thought I'd have to say this on video, but counting calories does nothing to your metabolism. I mean, what mechanism would make this happen? Oh fuck. They've started writing down what they eat. Oh, it's time for me to leave. The act of calorie counting is entirely independent of the dietary methodology you follow. I know people on low carb and intermittent fasting diets that count calories. But Jason has a habit of making overblown claims when it comes to your metabolism, doesn't he? You simply cut calories, and this is the way that, you know, I was taught and everybody was taught. You simply cut the fat, you eat less fat, um, because fat is very dense in calories. Carbs you get less calories, and therefore your body is going to lose body fat. But that's not necessarily Probably. true. If you eat 500 calories less, your body could simply decide to burn 500 calories less, and you won't lose any body fat. 
I was on board with him until he said you won't lose any body fat. It is true that when you reduce your calorie intake and you lose weight, the number of calories your body burns will go down. It's because you weigh less. The problem here is Jason repeatedly uses the example that if you reduce your calorie intake by X number of calories, your body will automatically burn X number of calories less and you will lose no weight. And this just isn't correct. If it was correct, nobody who reduced their calorie intake would ever lose weight. And the funny thing about this is in most research trials that measure metabolic adaptation, they do it post weight loss. Even if we pick one of the studies that shows the biggest decline in metabolic rate, the Minnesota starvation experiment, they had their calorie intake cut in half, but they lost a quarter of their body weight. In another study that looked at successful weight loss maintainers, subjects who had the biggest decreases in metabolic rates were the ones who lost the most weight. I'm not saying that decreases in metabolic rates are ideal or anything, but they occur in tandem with weight loss. They don't stop weight loss from ever occurring in the first place. Just for a bit of extra comedy, in one of the articles where Jason says reducing your calorie intake won't result in weight loss, he cites this study. So let's take a look at it. Firstly, it specifically says that going into a negative energy balance or calorie deficit is necessary for weight loss. It also states that although metabolic rate does decrease in response to weight loss, it doesn't prevent it. So Jason is arguing that if you reduce your calorie intake, your metabolic rate reduces to the same magnitude and this stops weight loss from ever occurring. And to do this, he cites a research paper that states that calorie deficits are necessary and decreases in metabolic rates are not substantial enough to stop weight loss. It also points out that people need to stop perpetuating this myth. He literally cites a paper that calls out people for doing the thing that he's doing. Bravo, bra fucking go. That is impressively cringeworthy. When someone claims that you shouldn't reduce your calorie intake if you want to lose weight, what are their chosen vehicles? Low carb diets, which are not universally superior to other diets and not universally easier to adhere to as confirmed by the systematic review of systematic reviews. And intermittent fasting plans, which are not universally superior in the long term either, as confirmed by these review papers. Both of these still rely on calorie balance. And the thing is, a lot of low carb and intermittent fasting plans don't worry about all the research he's misrepresenting because he's on their team. Long term weight loss is notoriously difficult and we need to have conversations about that. But do you know what makes it more difficult? Narrowing down their dietary options even further while simultaneously discrediting the underlying mechanism which is necessary to facilitate weight change. Who pays the collateral damage for this misinformation? How about people that already follow ketogenic plans but still hit weight loss plateaus and they're confused about calories, like one of Jason's own followers on Twitter? If you like low carb and intermittent fasting diets, crack the fuck on, I've got nothing against them at all, they can work very well, but they still depend on calorie balance. If we really cared about helping people, we would discuss all all research honestly, right? Unless of course the goal is not to help people, but just to sell as many books as possible.